So we're going to get into some of the myths, conspiracies, and um, what we feel are kind of like different things surrounding the firearms business. So you guys can start listing them out. What are some of the conspiracies, theories, and myths around the firearms business that you think you've seen out there? This is going to be a really fun one. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, I've been looking forward to doing this one for a while. It's episode 26. Uh, hit the airplane thingy. So, yeah, definitely tap the airplane. We're going to give some prizes away. But we're definitely going to get into some of the myths and conspiracies. I'm, I'm starting up YouTube. So we're going to be live on YouTube. If everyone gets a chance, tap thumbs up on YouTube for me real quick. And head over there and make a comment. But this is myths, conspiracies, in theories around firearms business. We're going to kick it off right away with a really exciting one. We're going to talk about why the Glock is not the best concealed carry gun. And we're doing this kind of tongue in cheek as we always do. It's a little bit of fun, a little bit of, uh, you know, poking holes in some things. And I want you guys' opinion. I want you to chime in. And yes, Cassie, to an extent, yes, it is. Don't lie. But we're going to get into the into the why, you know, uh, diving right in. Obviously, many of us think it is, but we're going to dive right into why it might not be. So, theories, okay? Theories as to why it might not be. And we're gonna we're gonna peel back the layers. So it's not perfection, but it's reliable. Great point. That was actually gonna be my next one, seven one seven. That's an excellent point. It's not perfect, but it's reliable. Okay? Absolutely number one. You hit the nail on the head. Okay? Not perfect, but it's reliable. What else? If it was perfect, we wouldn't do so many upgrades to it. Perfect. Perfect. What else? What else? What else do you got? So we're talking about myths, conspiracies, and theories around the firearms business. There's a lot of upgrades for it. So a few things. This is just topic number one. Few slim options, which if you notice, they're trying to change. If you're not following Tierra Tactical, you need to. So myths, conspiracies, and theories around the firearms business. Conspiracy theories. What do we have? There's many sizes and calibers. Too many to choose from. So, what are more myths, conspiracies, and theories around the firearms business? What's up, Johnny Targets? So after a few long days off, we get into a topic that's a lot of fun to talk about. We'll give some prizes away. And we're going to get into some of the myths and conspiracies around the firearms business. One of the biggest ones always is that it's Glock and nothing else. And I would be wrong if I didn't touch on it. Again, some of this is tongue-in-cheek. Some of this is, um, you know, uh, you know... It's just a little bit of satire, so don't read into it too much. I don't want to get the, you know, the, the conspiracy mongers all over me. Um, but I want to kind of get into it a little bit. So what are some of the theories? So long, long time ago, we'll get into it a little bit. 
you know, Glock became the go-to pistol for everybody. Um, people badmouth the high power. I like mine. So what are some of the, the theories that people think Glock's the best? It's the simplicity. It's the perfection. It's, it doesn't require much. It's, it's pretty much set it and forget it. So that's always been one of the, the hallmarks of the Glock platform. Um, reasons for why others could be better, slimmer design. I think when we saw when the Smith & Wesson Shield came out, everybody kind of flocked to the Shield as the go-to carry gun for a while. And I think that that kind of forced Glock to take a look at, you know, some of the more slimline options that it's coming out with now, the 43, the 42, some of the different series as you see coming out now. So that's some of the reasons why, you know, there might be some, some deeper penetration into that into that Glock market. But uh, for sure, I think that there's been a, a little bit of a rattling in the cage. But again, some of this is with tongue in cheek, so don't you know read into it more than you know need be. It's not one of those situations that I need like you know everybody to take this too seriously. But I think there's something to be said about some of these myths and some of these things. The other myth we're going to get into and we're going to tackle is that you have to have all the these different. Um, you know, tactical stuff and it has to be like uh, a tactical bag and it has to be a tactical this and a tactical that. When when you really talk to, um, you know, people in the field, they typically rely on equipment that they purchase in the field wherever they are. So, um, you know, are we over, do you have to have something that says tactical on it or something tied to tactical? The answer is probably no, but there's a lot of people out there that feel you have to have something that's like, you know, tactical. I have an MP shield in size, but I'm a capacity hoe. So that's that. Great point. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so the other thing is, are we too tactical? The third one we're going to get into, and I'm going to go over all the topics is... Do you have to sear coat? Everybody feels this need that they have to sear coat their rifles. Is that a myth? Is it a conspiracy theory? It's one of those things. There's such an emphasis on, you know, sear coating it. Does everything have to be sear coated? Sear coat for everybody. Sear coat, sear coat, sear coat, sear coat. So do you have to sear coat everything? Go ahead on YouTube, tap thumbs up and share. My fourth myth, just bling. My fourth myth speaks to what you guys are talking about is are upgrades necessary? Are upgrades necessary? And the fifth one we'll see if somebody comes up with. So, starting at the top with the why Glock is the best concealed carry, is it a conspiracy? Is it a myth? Is it true? Are there other options out there that are just as good, but we've been so, you know, brainwashed into it's a Glock world? So, there's, there's a lot of things. And again, I will tell you my personal beliefs. I personally believe you know, Glock is one of the better options out there for the concealed carry enthusiast because of many of the factors that could be brought up as to why they're not. Um, I like the idea that there's just a trigger safety. I like the idea that it's very dependable and it's very reliable. So it makes for a great option. So, you know, it's one of those things. It's chicken and egg. You know, it's what you're looking for in a pistol. In the middle of the night, you know, do you, you, you know, you want to be fiddling around with safeties and things like that, especially if you're just a basic nightstand protection person where you keep the gun in the nightstand and that's kind of how you roll. I personally, you know, keep a revolver in the nightstand. That's just me, but everybody's different. So looking at all these different options, looking at all these different options in the concealed carry world, 
Um, why is it Glock wins that battle all the time? It's a little bit of a conspiracy theory. It's a little bit of truth. It's a little bit of everything. It's a little bit of marketing. Um, this is my safety. So there's a lot of factors. But I want to boil it down to myths and conspiracies and get you guys' thoughts on why it's a Glock world. You definitely have to upgrade the sights to night sights. I don't agree with that, Cassie. I've never understood the uh, the obsession with night sights. Um, night sights may as well be the fifth myth. You know, myth. Uh, night sights don't illuminate the person you're shooting at, and I never understood the theory behind night sights. Uh, I will never understand them. I, I will. You know, there's a lot of people that say, "What's the point of night sights?" Um, if you're shooting in darkness and you don't know what you're shooting at, should you be taking the shot? I'd argue the answer is no. But that's the theory behind night sights. So, night sights, you kind of lose me at night sights. Um, I'm not a big night sight person. I use black front post. Uh, you know, if it's pitch black out and you're telling me you can't see the person, but you can see your sights, you know, uh, you should be close enough to the person. You can identify your target, identify the threat, identify you know, whatever. But I have a hard time being convinced that night sights are a must. I've never been convinced of that. And I know there's a lot of companies out there that make a lot of money on night sights, but... Yep, yep. I mean, lights, lights have a better place, and you'd be surprised how you use lights. Chuck, um, I think a lot of guys will tell you Lights help you actually not necessarily with a target, but they help you if you're working in an environment where there's no light, you have to see downstairs, hallways. I'm a big fan of intermittent light. And, you know, I think that that has a place. And if you've taken any, any, um, you feel more comfortable with your shots lined up. I can't argue with that, Cassie. Uh, but, you know, we, you know, night sights are definitely a little bit of a conspiracy theory and a myth, you know, and I'm willing to let this conversation kind of take its own path, especially what you guys deem are myths or conspiracies around the firearms business. Night sites would definitely be high on my list as a big time conspiracy theory. I would love for someone to articulate to me how night sites make sense. And I think Cassie, you hit the only point that could make sense. It's lining up your sites. I'll buy that. But if you can't identify the target, I'm trying to think how you would articulate that. Well, you know, you lose me there. You know, I couldn't see the target, but I lined up my sights really well. So there's that factor. Um, but is it a myth or a conspiracy theory that Glock's the best, or are they the best? Is it a myth... Um, or conspiracy theory that you have to sear code everything. Are upgrades completely necessary? Or is that something that's fabricated and cooked up? Are we in a tactical world? You know, are we living in a tactical world where it has to be a tactical bag? They glow so I can find it in the dark. Electric sights. Yeah. I would think night sights are okay in low visibility, not in total darkness. Yeah, I mean, I think that night sights may have a place. Spray and pray with a slimline concealed carry uh, equals lots of... <laughs> Absolutely. Tierra Tactical. So, you know, there's so many... Guys, to get into my, my little bit of a rant, there's so many... Uh, and I know we're having some fun. There's so many different conspiracy theories and myths around the firearms business. I want to kind of expand upon a couple of mine and why I brought them up. So one of the things you see around the firearms business is this push and you've seen it for a while that everything has to be tactical. It has to have more pouches and it has to have more molly and it has to have more of this and more of that. And then you've seen recently a push towards this low visibility and everything's going to be low vis. Um, you know, I encourage a lot of you guys to start to think out of the box. And when you think of low visibility, 
Think of what you can buy in a store relatively inexpensively to assimilate or to mirror what you see in your environment. So if you want to truly be in a low visibility state, what's up 406? If you want to truly be in a low visibility state and you were, say for example, going to a, um, you know, a, a, you know, pick anything, an, an event, you know, how would you blend in? How would you want to blend in? You'd want to have equipment, clothing, things that match the environment. If I'm going to a frat house and I want to appear to blend in, you know, you may have a polo shirt on and khakis or whatever, you know. Um, you know, if you're walking to college campus, you want to look like you belong on that college campus. If you want to, you know, when you start to think about low visibility, you know, it's one of those things, you know, you don't have to buy everything that screams tactical or tactical. I usually encourage people um, to think out of the box. Pop the top, exactly. So some of the myths, conspiracies, and things we see in the firearms business are things like, you know, night sights. Well, how, how does that help you identify the target? I like my night sights because I use my light to initially identify, but therefore to control the target. Light is a great control, but I do not always want to give away my position. Absolutely. That is the textbook answer, and I know why you gave it, you son of a bitch. But that is the textbook answer to why it makes sense to have night sights. Now, does everybody have that type of training, you douchebag? Because I know who's behind that account. Does everybody have that type of training? No. It's one of those things. Unless you've taken a low light course or you've had some low light training, you can use light in a lot of creative ways, whether it's to paint an area or to to you know to to light up certain certain points and identify but not everybody has that type of training cassie says as far as tactical goes gray men blend gray men blend in yeah i mean i think gray's been the go-to for low visibility but i disagree if i'm going to a tennis match i'm buying a tennis racket bag you know so there's not a cure-all for that and it doesn't have to have tactical in front of it I know if I'm operating in an urban environment, I'm getting stuff that's very urban to that area. You know, if I'm going to a gym, I'm using my gym bag that's like maybe a six-pack bag or something like that. You know, you, you have to be very careful because to the trained eye, you know, if someone's going to pick up on it right away. So we don't have to live in a everything has to be tactical world. For those of you that headed over to YouTube, thank you for tapping thumbs up. And please take a minute to share. So there's a lot of myths and conspiracies around, you know, what the gun industry shows you and what you have to buy and what you don't have to buy. Cerakote's a big one. Everybody's, you know, constantly, you know, on the Cerakote train. You know, you have to have everything Cerakoted. Everything has to be coded, you know, and so on and so forth. That's a big one. But... You don't necessarily have to live in a tactical world only. You know, a lot of people, you know, I, I get a lot of stuff sent to me that's known. A lot of people talk about, you know, clothing. I wear a lot of Lululemon. I wear a lot of stuff like you see me on in this podcast. Um, that's, you know, that's my go-to. Um, that's how I am. You know, that's my go-to is more what I can buy in a store, what I can buy in a mall, what I can do, you know, in a very low visibility scenario. I like to be dressed, you know, if it's, if the environment calls for flip-flops, you damn right, I'll be in flip-flops. You don't want to be, but if that's what the environment calls for, you know, um, that's what I'm going to wear. So, you know, I think everybody has to take a step back. And I think the, the over tactifying of things is something that definitely comes up a lot, you know, in conversation. So a few things kind of come to mind. So my next point 
And the next thing I want to get to is, do you have to Cerakote? Does everything have to be Cerakoted? Does everything have to be, um, you know, a Gucci gun? The answer to that's a simple one, no. But I think the last few years we've seen a major push towards this and everybody feeling like, oh, I got to get this Cerakoted, I got this Cerakoted, I got to get this Cerakoted, it does this, it does this, it does this. It's important to discern what's a luxury and what's necessary. And it's not always necessary. You know? It's not always necessary. Does it help? Yes. It absolutely helps. But it's not necessary. So you have to start to think about those things. You have to start to think about those things. Anyone have any questions? I see it less and less though, maybe just those who I follow. Yeah, I mean, I think people are kind of wising up to a lot of the different myths and conspiracies out there. And I think there's, there's a lot of them. I think that there's a lot of push from the companies that you need this and you need that. I, I get a lot of questions all the time. I got a question today from an old friend. Um, he asked me, he said, um, God, he goes, you know, he, he said, well, we'll get into what else we carry and conceal besides the shield. He said, I need a trigger for my rifle. And I said, well, what are you doing with your rifle? You know, and I feel like that's something we keep coming back to is what's the goal? What's the goal? So the question got asked, aside from Glock and Shield, what else do you carry, conceal, or like? Uh, me personally, I'll give you five guns that are great guns for carry, conceal, and give you all the different options you could ask for in reliability and consistency. So obviously, I'm just going to name manufacturers, and I'm going to go right down the line, and I'll give you my why. Obviously, Glock. Glock is a phenomenal conceal carry. It's reliable, it's dependable, the gun just runs. It just runs. So obviously Glock. Second, obviously Smith & Wesson, especially because of the shield. The shield is a great option, okay? Phenomenal. And you can, after one and two, you can pretty much move these in any order you see fit. I think the last couple of years, SIG has come out with some really good options. I think SIG has come out with a lot of options that make sense. And I think if you're not looking at them as a little bit of a dark horse or someone that has some really cool poppers, you got to give them, give them a look. You've got to give them a look. Um, yeah. And you know, it pains me sometimes to suggest them because they took so long to embrace striker fire, but they're there. They're there. You know, um, and they're starting to embrace it and you can bet your ass they're going to get it right. Fourth, I think a great gun. If you were to ask me, you're not a gun. Let's let me set the tone for this answer. You're not a gun person. You're not even really a concealed carry person, but you just want something that's reliable that's just a good all-around gun and particularly for the female crowd i think that ruger lc9 is a great option a great option it's flat it's simple it's easy it's much easier to manipulate than the car um that's khr and i think it it offers a lot and if I had a loved one, a female or someone that I just, you know, um, yeah, it just something simple. I, I, I would have a hard time not recommending the Ruger LC9. I think they've done a great job with that. And I think that gun makes a lot of sense. Uh, no. You never buy a new edition gun. You wait till the second edition. Third, the, the last one. The fifth option 
you know, um, and I said Glock, Smith and Wesson, Sig, and then it's a huge drop off, and we get into some of the other stuff. And I was just going to say this, um, you know, Taurus would be one as we get into that budget, like the Ruger LC9, we get into that budget space, you'd be crazy not to look at them. I mean, I understand what everybody's saying. You, you get to that point where there's some drop off. Yeah, Gunjitsu, the TP9 is great. But now you're getting into more some of the, the fuller size guns. We're talking about like strictly from a concealed carry standpoint. You know, when you get into some of those more full size options, like if Smith & Wesson didn't have the, the uh, no, 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 you're fine. I'm glad you brought that up. If Smith & Wesson didn't have the, um, the, the shield and they weren't expanding that, that slim concealed carry line, um, they would be almost playing themselves out of the conversation a little bit, a little bit, because I think everybody's going towards those smaller guns, not necessarily to that point where you're, you have something that's a good all around. The bodyguard's a little small for my taste. The bodyguard's a little small for my taste. So I'll be very honest with you. The bodyguard is a very small option. Um, you're getting into more of those micro guns, what I call micro guns. You know, if it fits into the palm of your hand, the gun completely, you're getting a little into those micro carries, pocket carries in, in spaces like that. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but it's probably not, uh, ideal. I, I liken them to almost glorified revolvers, little get off me guns, but, um, you know, still a good option and, and nice to have. Uh, I had the opportunity to see some of the new Glocks at SHOT Show, and I really like what they're doing, and I like the space that they're in. But a lot of fun. My Savage 1917 is really nice and simple gun. Mine's 32. Yeah, I mean, if you have something that you've used for years and it works, then go with it. But my five options to answer the question and kind of put parameters on it, Glock, Smith & Wesson, SIG, I would definitely say the Ruger LC9 is in there, has to be, in Taurus. And I'm not saying anything else isn't good, but you start to get into particulars and little spaces where like a great example was like the TP9. Phenomenal gun, just very big. And unless you're a bigger person, it's going to be tough to conceal carry that properly. Now, some of the other things... We talked about, I carry a Rhino and a G43 as backup, maybe much, but I don't think so. Eh. If you're into the two guns, you know, if I'm carrying two guns, I'm carrying a 19 and a 26. That's me. Just the interchangeability of the mags and the ability to swap mags make it that much easier. I don't like having multiple platforms. Now... Are we, another big conspiracy theory is, are we making everything too much too tactical, too, everything's way too tactical? You know, do we overthink the tactical? I could argue yes. I think people have to take a more simplified approach. You don't need tactical socks. You don't need tactical underwear. You don't need tactical t-shirts. You don't need tactical everything. Now, the industry will tell you different. There comes a point, yeah, Gunjutsu, there comes a point where you're over tactified. Tactical scarves, tactical hats. I know this if I walk in a room and I have what I call somewhat of a trained eye, I don't put myself on anybody's level. I just say, I can pick out somebody who might know how to handle themselves based on their shoes. I can just look and see if somebody's wearing Solomon's and eyebrows going up right away. If somebody's maybe wearing cool pants or, you know, tactical pants, I might be raising a little bit of an eye. Somebody's wearing a flowy shirt, you know, 
Or maybe they have a bag with Molly on it. We're going at them first. So be careful getting overly tactical. There's always the 5'11 a guy. I'm trying not to go there. There's always the 5'11 guy. It goes beyond situational awareness to cast. You got to kind of really do more what I call um, in gunjitsu. And some of these guys may understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying you don't, Cassie. Um, you have to do what you call, like you remember in, it's a bad example, but I'm going to make the example. You have to do like a head to toe analysis. Almost like in the Terminator when he reads people, he's reading their vitals and everything. You almost have to go from the toes up. Start with the shoes all the way up. You know, start with the, the shoes and go all the way up. And do a little bit of an analysis. And you can pick out people. You don't need an NRA sticker on the back of your truck. You can pick people out. All right, that guy could be carrying. Okay, this guy looks like he might be able to handle himself. You can tell. You know, one of the funny things with me from very early on in my career was, uh, you know, people didn't understand kind of when I wasn't what I wore every day when I wasn't in photos when you didn't see. I wore gym clothes. What, what I'm wearing right now, some gasp sweats, something like this. I wear gym clothes almost everywhere I go. Unless I'm dressing up, I'm in gym clothes. I've gone to dinner in gym clothes. I get ridiculed for it. I dress in mainly Lululemon or to black tops like this. Um, you know, sweatpants. That's why a lot of times if I'm carrying, I'm carrying like a Glock 26. Something small, simple. You know, somebody brought up to me today. Geez, I really want to get one of those Kydex holes. True story. Somebody messed me this day. Um, I want to get one of those Kydex holsters that, uh, that, you know, um, has the mag, the extra mag in it. And they're like, what do you think of those? Or which one do you suggest? I was like, I don't really suggest one. I don't carry one. And I'm like, they're like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, most of the time I'm carrying my 19 with an extended or my, you know, my 26 with an extended. I'm like, if I need more than 10 rounds, I'm in, I'm in trouble. You know, it's not to say you don't have a malfunction and I get all the theories behind carrying another mag. You know, if I'm carrying that in my blade, that's pretty much where I'm at. You know, I'm going to play ball from there. Um, but that's me. Yeah, I mean, that's me. I'm like, we have bigger problems. I, you know, I'm not, you know, smuggling drugs with the cartels, so I don't need you know, four mags with me at all times. I keep some in the car. Don't get me wrong. I keep a few in the car in case, but that's, that's how I operate. That's, you know, if I have to grab a couple in the car, I can always do that. Now, I do think one of the, one of the definitely confirmed myths is we're a little over tactified. I'm going to confirm that. You know, spare in the pocket's fine. Absolutely, gun jitsu. Spare in the pocket. You, know, you get your winter coat or your jeans, just throw a spare in your pocket. You know, if you can't, as a novice, you know, I don't think anybody in here is a world-class shooter. As a novice shooter, myself included, you know, I mean, you want to be in the best situation to succeed, but, I mean, I'll take a, I'll take a spare in the pocket, you know, over a bulging piece of Kydex. So, that's me. You know, right next to the tourniquet. Yeah, Neo Mag has a little clip. There's a few of them that have some nice options. But more often than not, more often than not, as a novice shooter, you should be looking for some type of cover when you're reloading. And you should be, you know, I mean, the chances of somebody being in a mag-changing gunfight are pretty slim are pretty slim I'd be carrying it more for the malfunction property than anything like you get a malfunction you tap rack nothing you got to drop the mag I'd be carrying it more for that the likelihood of somebody you know having 10 rounds or better and needing 20 in a, in a shootout are pretty slim 
pretty slim. They're less than even being in the shootout in the first place. Very slim. And if you have a super reliable gun like a Glock, that likelihood is almost out the window. So think these things through, guys. There's a lot of conspiracy theories and myths around the firearms business. There's a lot of stuff people put out there. There's a lot of things, and I get all the theories. I understand them all. I totally get it. You know, I get it. But you have to see through the bullshit. Most people will never fire a firearm for self. You hope. You always hope. Like, people ask me all the time if I've ever been in a shootout. I'm like, no, and I hope not. <laughs> you know, I really hope not. I have a better chance of probably using, you know, any of your, your fighting skills. You should really, most people should really spend more time working on their fighting skills. Whether it's jujitsu, Muay Thai, boxing, whatever it is that you put together. You know, you should be working on those more than anything else. Those would be areas I would definitely expand upon or want to get better at if I was an everyday person um, just trying to defend myself. You know, the first thing I would ask somebody is, have you taken a self-defense class that doesn't involve using a firearm? You know, what, you, know you, could, you could do a simple exercise with 90% of gunfighters on social media and, and I'm saying 90% where you could just get them in a simple mount and there's probably a good chance they're not going to be able to get you off if you know, if you halfway know what you're doing. Um, and they were in a ground and pound scenario. Karate Kid does count. You know, I would recommend to anybody, you know, at the very least, go go do some some jujitsu for a little while, go do something, you know, learn how to strike, take a boxing class or two, you know, you, you got to have a, a, a plan A because the gun's really a plan B in many ways. Because there's a solid chance it's going to start with a physical altercation unless you're robbed or you're in a home invasion scenario. So, you know, most of the time, that's where it's going to begin. But there's something to be said with the over tactifying of everybody with keeping it simple. And that's kind of what I'm getting at, guys. That's the tongue in cheek in all of this is keep it simple. Keep it simple. You know, keep your concealed carry simple. Keep your holster system simple. Keep your clothing and what you wear on a regular basis really simple. I get a lot of people that ask me all the time. I had someone, again, just recently asked me, say, I'm taking a course with so-and-so. You know, it's a low visibility class. It's just a concealed carry class. What should I wear? I go, where would you wear every day? Where would you wear every day? I mean, yeah, when I'm on the range, there are times I'll wear, like, more, like, tactical pants. But that's because I have so many things in my pockets. Like, if I'm RSOing and... I'm involved with it on a certain aspect. I make sure I have like tools in my pocket stuff in case I got to fix a gun for somebody or do some something, you know, don't, don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. Keep it simple, 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 simple. And to answer the other conspiracy theory and myth is Cerakote necessary? No. Um, elastic waistband shorts. Uh, I wear a company, the pants and shorts I wear, Cassie, are a company called Barbell Apparel. To me, hands down, they're the best in the business. Hands down. I wear them or I wear Lululemon. To me, those are the two best. And I know a lot of guys that do UC work and they do um, a lot of uh, private security and that's what they wear. So, you know, more often than not, that's going to be your most comfortable option. It's going to offer you ability to get what you need in and also have comfort so you know when you're moving or you're in a dynamic situation where you may have to move and and, and the only time i i ratchet up my tactical you know i guess you would say like tactical nonsense or whatever um is if 
you know, I'm going to a place where I feel almost a little uncomfortable or I feel like there could be an issue that's crowded places, malls, movie theaters. For some reason, movie theaters paranoid the fuck out of me. You know, places like that. You know, but Barbell Apparel is a company. You know, send them a message, tell them I sent you. You know, stuff like that. You know, really good quality stuff. So we're going to give away another batch of magazines from Mission First. Two. I'm going to put the rules up. putting the rules up now I got another batch of mission first tactical mags I'm gonna give away I sent uh, I believe it was marks out so his are out he may have got him he might not have got him but make sure uh, you thank mission first but I have another batch I'm gonna send out to some lucky winner so head over to my last two posts and comment and tag and I'll pick a winner tonight on those I hate crowded areas. That's why I do online pickup for groceries. Online pickup for groceries is just smart. So my last, my fifth kind of conspiracy theory and myth around the firearms business. Okay. The last conspiracy theory and myth is that, and you know, I don't want anyone to misread this. But this is something that's really important to me. I want to kind of dead the conspiracy theory that a gun is the only answer. A lot of people go out and get concealed carry licenses and they carry a gun. And that to me is the biggest myth and fallacy in the firearms business. I encourage a lot of you and I encourage everybody I come across to please go out and get a certain level of training. Okay. I would recommend to anybody out there before you're going to get knee deep in the concealed carry game to please take some level of self-defense, some level of self-defense training beyond an NRA course or anything like that. You know, a lot of people throw buzzwords around. And I feel like, I feel like these buzzwords are the cancer of the industry. They throw buzzwords around like, I'm situationally aware and I'm, I'm not picking on you, Cassie. I know you are. Um, I'm situationally aware. I'm this, I'm that. Or I took a jujitsu class once five years ago. You need to have some level of self-defense. Lifting weights and fitness is a form of self-defense without question. Staying in shape is a form of self-defense. Okay? Do everything you can. Someone who can, and I'm giving you guys solid advice here. Someone who can articulate a situation the best is always going to win. So if you can articulate, look, you know, I'm, I'm this and that. I have this level of training and this, I have this level of training. This was the only option I had. They're going to believe you and they're going to take your words a lot more seriously if you do have all those things to back up why you chose that option. So one of the biggest myths sold, in my opinion, by the firearms business, because it's a business, they're trying to sell guns, is that once you get a concealed carry license and you have a license to carry, you're all set. I can tell you, again... I don't, I can't confirm this statistic. I can't put accuracy behind it, but there's probably a solid 90% of people out there that will never even get to the gun. If they're charged or they're rushed or somebody rushes them with a knife or somebody, you know, comes at them in a robbery situation, they'll never get there. And I don't think I'm throwing lip service out there. 
And the reason they'll never get there is they don't have a plan A. They don't have a basic skill set to shrug somebody off them. They don't have the, the gas tank to, to fight them. Because I'll put this to you, Chuck. I'll put this. I'll put this to anybody. If you're 10 feet away from somebody that's like an MMA fighter that's highly trained in combatives, for example, and you have a gun. Now you know their resume and you have a gun and all you have is a concealed carry license. But you have to draw that gun and shoot them before they get to you. How confident are you going to be? Does your confidence level go from a 10 to a 5? From a 10 to a 2? Because I'm willing to bet if you don't get to it, there's a chance you could. If you don't get to it, you're in deep shit. Deep shit. So you better have an option. Deep shit. And this comes back to the biggest myth in the world from a 10 to a negative two that's right 406 this comes back to the biggest myth in the world and again if i was doing this with fitness i would say this the one of the biggest myths in fitness and i i sat down and i had this conversation with a bunch of fitness guys one year at olympia i think i was a lot of guys think that i lift weights so that makes me that's that's it lifting weights is window dressing it's window dressing being in shape and being in good shape and having a good gas tank and having good conditioning is going to be step one towards any level of passing the eyeball test. You're squared away. You have a certain, you carry yourself a certain way. You have a certain look. You're going to pass the eyeball test. Okay, that guy looks like he could handle himself. He's put together. He, we know he's going to be strong. Okay. And no matter what he does, it's going to pass the sniff test. Where you start to add layers on top of that is when you start to add things in, like the training. And nobody's saying you have to go out and be a black belt. Nobody's saying you have to be this, that, or the other thing. But have some layers added on top of that. Have some survival instincts. Have some basic layers. If you don't add those layers in, you're going to be in deep trouble. Those are all really, really important things to consider. So just having a concealed carry license, I want to, this is like important that this sinks in and it's one of the myths, you know, sold in the firearms business. You see the girl just, you know, you know, whatever. Can steroids be used in a good way or do you think people shouldn't take them no matter what? I think it could be okay in moderation. I think the best thing for performance enhancers semi-auto kid is to take a look at the movie um bigger stronger faster by uh by chris bell mark bell's brother i think that'll dispel a lot of myths associated with it um i will say that there's a lot of science that's comes out come out the last five or eight years on low testosterone levels and everything else but i would definitely recommend anybody willing to go that route that they exhaust all natural options and they also talk with a doctor or somebody that can advise them on where their levels are because if you have low t or you're trying to operate with low t and go to the gym and train and and be in shape it's going to be difficult because that's what's going to help you produce the muscle and heal and train at a certain level so there's a lot of myths associated with with that uh the new thing in sports that we see is micro dosing that's what john jones kind of got bagged for i think john jones was doing some micro dosing so a lot of guys do do some micro dosing but i think you have to get some knowledge and you have to uh uh bigger stronger faster it's by chris bell and that'll dispel a lot of myths associated with doing that yeah, picograms, uh, you know, I think micro dosing has become kind of like the in vogue thing to do for athletes. So, you know, consistent micro dosing over time. But I think it's just about knowledge. 
And my prediction is in the next, I've said this the other day, I think in the next eight or 10 years, similar to, to, to marijuana, I think you'll see things relax on some levels of performance enhancement because it's just becoming one of those things. It's so commercialized. It's so commercialized and so many people are doing it. It's, it's, it's insane. Do I recommend it by and large to the, to the general public? The answer is no. Um, I think you have to be at a certain level of training. I think you should be well trained. Um, yeah, I don't think so. Semi auto kid though. I don't think so. Maybe where you are, I, I don't see that. I don't see that in 406 nutrition. I'm sure he doesn't see that. I, I, I don't, I, I don't think people view it as hardcore drugs. Um, I think they can, I think any drug can be abused. I think any drug can be abused. Marijuana can be abused. You do too much coke, you're a cokehead. You do too much dope, you're a dopehead. You drink too much, you're drunk. You know, you, you do too much, you know, performance enhancers, you're going to be a, a, a juice head or whatever the term is they use now. You know, I think it's, it's one of those things you have to explore and you have to see if it's best for you and you have to make sure you've exhausted every option that you have and make an informed decision. And I would definitely recommend getting your levels checked, seeing someone talking it out and making sure that it's best for you. But I do know this micro dosing in sports has become one of the big things, you know, um, but there's a lot of myths and conspiracies associated with performance enhancing drugs. Of course, of course, that's, you want to talk about something that has a lot of myths, you know, we're talking about myths and conspiracies associated with the firearms business. So we talked about five different myths and conspiracies associated with the firearms business. Um, one was around that Glock is the best concealed carry. Are we too tactical? Do we overdo the tactical? Does, does every bag we own have to be tactical? Does every shoe we own have to be tactical? Do you have Cerakote? Do you have to Cerakote? Are upgrades necessary to guns? And is a gun the necessary option? Is a gun a must? 406 says, truly exhausted. So many people reach for steroids thinking that they have reached a natural limit, but they, aren't actually far, they are actually far from it. That's absolutely true. You can absolutely perform incredibly high at a natural level. Will you reach the best you could be? I'll say no. I'll come right out and say it. no. You will not. But unless you're standing in front of me and you're telling me that naturally you've reached the peak of of your performance. And if that's true, there's probably a solid chance. Um, that's not true. Now, 406, are there other things that come into play? Stress, daily life, everything else? Yes, absolutely. There are other things that come into play where, where layering that on would make some sense. And looking into it as an option would make some sense. If you're a high performance athlete and you're training at a high level um, where maybe you're on the range two, three times a week, you're training a martial art, you're in the gym, you're in the gym four or five times a week, you're going to be wearing your body down and where any performance enhancement is going to help you is going to be with the healing and the recovery more than anything, more than anything. It's more healing and recovery. So the thing I tell everybody is it's not just about pumping your body full of whatever you can pump your body full of and saying, ah, fuck it. You know, uh, I'm just going to take a bunch of shit and I'm going to go rip weights. That's not going to work. If I was a high performing athlete with a seven figure potential, I'd take, yeah. And that's, that's the other thing, 406. A lot of people like to throw shade and I'll touch on that for a second because this is a good conspiracy theory and myth around the defense community too. A lot of people like to throw shade, but if you're staring at a seven figure potential or even a six figure potential, you're, you're an athlete, you're performing at a high level, you're playing 200 baseball games a year, whatever it is, a lot of people judge but they don't understand what your body goes through, especially at 32, 33, 34, 35 years old, and you start to get long in your career, it's very difficult. And a lot of people bring up the Tom Brady example. And let me tell you something, T 
Tom Brady is a quarterback, and I'm not taking... Everybody knows I love Tom Brady, and I, I'm not taking a single thing away from him. But Tom Brady does has the best chefs in the world cooking for him. He does a lot of pliability work, a lot of flexibility work. His position doesn't demand the um, that raw power burst that other things might demand. I mean, he is... He has the best in the world available to him. I mean, proper hydration, proper sleep, you know, hyperbaric chambers, everything available to him. So he has certain things that just the average person does not have available to him. And good for him for having those things available. My boy took a lot of creatine high school and he looked jacked, but his muscles were like water, bro. Muscles are water. I hate to be the bearer of bad news to you. Now, your body is made up of a ton of water. And, you know, water is a huge component. So, I got two minutes left. It's going to kick me off here, guys. I'm going to give away the Mission First Tactical Mags. Head over to my last two posts. Comment and tag. I'm going to pick a winner off of those two posts. They're Mission First Tactical Mags. Mark one last week. Someone's going to win this week. Make sure you guys head over to YouTube. Tap thumbs up. Subscribe and please, please, please support. What's up, Action Targets? Uh, share. Make sure you download on Podbean. Make sure you download on all the different forums. I'll bring the live back up briefly when we wrap the show. Uh, hopefully, everyone gets an opportunity. We'll finish up my thoughts on this stuff really fast. I'll come right back and wrap my thoughts on some of this stuff. But head over to YouTube and tap thumbs up and share if you get a moment. Make sure you download on Podbean and iTunes. We'll come right back real fast. So hopefully everybody gets the gist. Performance enhancement's never the total answer, guys. It's never the total answer. It's one small piece of the puzzle. And your performance can be enhanced in a number of different ways. But it's never the, the, the total the total answer. So to kind of wrap my thoughts on some of these things and kind of give you guys some insight, I never think that the total answer is just cramming yourself full of whatever you can get your hands on. It's like saying, you know, I'm going to have 14 mags in a gunfight. Well, what good are they if you don't know how to change mags? So there's a lot of things, a lot of factors. I do want to take a minute to thank everyone who participates in the giveaways and the sharing and everything else. It really helps when you guys visit the YouTube. It really helps when you guys tap thumbs up and you guys share. I really appreciate everybody doing that. I appreciate when everybody takes the time to share the YouTube, the YouTube clips or go to the podcast on iTunes and download and leave a review. If you get the opportunity, head over to Podbean and download as well. All that's helpful, guys, and it means a lot. So if you take a minute to do it, I greatly appreciate it. All the new podcasts are up, and we've covered a lot of different areas. We're talking tonight a little bit about conspiracy theories and myths around the firearms business, and we stemmed a little bit into self-defense, and we talked about some of that stuff. A lot of really cool topics. Um, there's so much we could talk about, and we could spend almost all day on it. Uh, no question. But I want everybody to kind of realize it's easy to go off on a tangent with some of these topics and it's easy to go down what I call like wormholes with some of these topics. I want everybody to kind of understand so I'm clear. I do think that it's important that you always consult or talk with an SME about these things. And that's a subject matter expert. So whether we're talking about concealed carry or we're talking about tactical clothing or we're talking about Cerakote or anything, it's important that you consult an SME and you take the time to talk with somebody who's a subject matter expert. And anybody knows me, and some of you have been in and out of this live, I do my best to respond to everybody and I do my best to give people my insight. Now, I don't have all day to sit there and get into you know long-winded debates about things but I try my best to answer all you guys so it's really important 
to take a minute and kind of start to ask yourself simple questions about, am I, you know, doing the right thing? Does this make sense? You know, what experience do I have with this holster? What experience do I have with that holster? Where, where's the, where's the rubber meet the road with some of these topics? We talked a little about lifting weights. We talked about, you know, enhancement with that. Uh, there's a lot of myths. There's a lot of conspiracy theories with that. And I just want everybody to know, do your best to do your due diligence in all these topics. Okay. I'm available to a point. I do my best to answer you guys, but make sure that you're doing all the due diligence that you can and all the data and all the research that I put out there or I put out there to you guys. It's to give you guys the best chance to answer the questions yourself for yourself. Different insights help to develop a full picture, even if they're not from SMEs. That's right, Will. SMEs help. And by subject matter experts, I mean guys that have thousands of hours in knowledge. You know, my expertise doesn't come from killing people. My expertise doesn't come from uh, some insane insight. It comes from the years I have working around the firearms business, being around the firearms business and working with the people that I've worked with. And I think that record to a degree speaks for itself. Uh, it's out there. It's visible. You go to my page, you can see the people I've trained with the people I've done things with, uh, what I've had at my disposal. And I ask a lot of questions and I've had quite a bit of training, um, easily hundreds of hours. There's no doubt about that. Um, maybe upwards to a thousand hours, I would go so far to say. Uh, but I suggest to everybody, take time. On the website, www.johnbartsholoshow.com, I've uploaded a few blogs, you guys. Um, check them out. Some of the blogs are really good. There's a lot of stuff there. There's a lot of data. Take a minute. Read some of them. Get caught up. If you have time, please head over to iTunes. If you have not, leave a review. If you have a minute, head over to um, Podbean if you don't have iTunes. Take a minute when you go to Podbean and download. If you have a second, YouTube, guys. Head over to YouTube and do me a favor. On YouTube, I would really appreciate it if everybody could tap thumbs up and share. It would be huge. I appreciate that. Every little bit counts. And if you have a second, like I said, check out the website. The website's www.johnbartoloshow.com. Thank the sponsors. Head over to my last two posts. Leave a comment. Tag somebody. I'll make you eligible to win the mags. We're giving the mags away. Mission First Tactical was kind enough to give some. I'm going to pick a winner. If no one has any other questions, I think we answered a lot of the conspiracy theories and myths associated with the firearms business. Hopefully this made some sense. We stemmed into self-defense in some other areas. I really hope it made sense to everybody, and I can't thank everybody enough. I'm going to sign off. If anyone has any questions, don't hesitate to shoot me a DM. i got an awesome show scheduled for tomorrow. And hopefully everybody is good, and I will talk to you guys soon. We are out.